Good morning. This is the new Tesla Model 3, specifically the Model 3 Long Range. Now, taking its name as inspiration, we're going to go for a long drive to see just how far you can realistically travel on a single charge. Starting here at the Tesla Service Centre in Cremorne, Melbourne, we're going to head southeast down to Tidal River, the most southern point of mainland Australia. We'll then turn around and make our way back, a round trip of 444 kilometres according to Google Maps. Now that's almost six hours of driving without stops, so we'd best get going. Thanks to a couple of efficiency tweaks with the updated Model 3, specifically the heat pump from the Model Y SUV and revised tyres, Tesla now claims that the Model 3 long range can go a maximum of 657 kilometres on one charge. So, why aren't we trying to drive 657 kilometres? Well, a few reasons. First of which is we're driving in the real world, not in the laboratory. So we've got, you know, traffic and changing speed limits and corners. We've got the aircon on. I'm not going to fang it, but we're not cruising either. I'll stick to the speed limits, I'll accelerate with traffic. This isn't meant to be a, can we eke every last kilometre out of a Model 3? This is a real world test. The good news is at the moment, Got the destination, Tidal River, plugged into the sat nav down at Wilson's Prom, and it says we're going to get to Tidal River with 52% battery. Those maths junkies out there, 48% there, 48% back, we'll get back, get back with our 4% battery. Since we've got a bit of time to kill in this first part of the journey, let me run you through everything they've changed on this updated Model 3. Externally, we've got all the bits that were chrome on the outside are now black. So the window surrounds, the indicators, stuff like that. Also, there's a new wheel design. Doesn't really look much different to the old one, but apparently it's new. Inside, we've got inductive charging pads for your phone. Very, very handy. All this interior trim that was piano black is now this kind of matte grey. We've also got this storage lid, which used to be a kind of a weird flappy thing, it went like that. Whereas now it's just a push slide. Again, feels a bit better, feels more quality, feels a bit better built. And in a similar vein, these thumb wheels on the wheel uh, used to be plastic and now they're metal. Another thing you might have noticed if you've seen early Teslas was it was basically spot the Mercedes switch gear, you know, some of the uh, window controls, the column stalk, stuff like that. Whereas now it's all bespoke Tesla stuff, which is, again, nicer. It makes it feel a bit more like its own car rather than a kit car. The massive touchscreen is a bit daunting at first, but it's basically like a giant iPad. In terms of functionality, it makes every other car infotainment feel pretty slow and clunky. There's a lot going on in here, a lot to swipe, a lot of functions, but it all becomes pretty intuitive once you get familiar with it. What the Model 3 does really need, though, is a head-up display. And it's kind of weird it doesn't have one for such a tech-focused car. Because there's no display or instruments in front of you, your speed is actually displayed in the top right corner of this screen. And it's okay, like it's, it's kind of in your field of vision, but because there's no reference point in an electric car as to how fast you're going, you know, you don't change any gears, there's no revs or noise or anything like that, you don't really know how fast you're going. You accelerate away from the lights and then suddenly go, oh, am I doing 45 or 65? Am I about to get a speeding ticket? That would be immediately solved by having little speed in front of you on the windscreen, along with sat-nav directions and, you know, autopilot directions, all sorts of things. Head-up displays are great. This car needs one. Right, folks, we've stopped in Fish Creek, which is kind of the gateway to the Wilson's Promontory National Park for a bit of a pit stop. Sit wrap. So the good news is, is we're going pretty well on the economy front since last charge. It's telling me here we've done 193 k's, 
used 29 kilowatt hours of battery at 109, 149 watt hours per kilometre. Bad news is we're going to get to Tidal River now with 48% battery. That's come down a bit because we've been running back a bit for, for photography and video. So that's used a bit of juice, which we might not have to do on the way back. So it's still really touch and go. So we're going to get to Tidal River with 48%. If we didn't do as much photography on the way back and videography, it's probably going to run out about even. So at the moment, we're either going to get back or maybe run out within walking distance of Tesla. So let's see how we go. So we should probably talk a little bit about the car itself. The Tesla Model 3 long range used to have a 75 kilowatt hour battery. From 2021 that goes up to 82 kilowatt hours. 258 kilowatts, 510 newton meters, pretty pokey, 0 to 100 in 4.4 seconds and a top speed of 233 kilometers an hour. So even though this isn't the full fat performance model, still pretty brisk. As I mentioned, range is 657 kilometers and there's a cute little wombat on the road. Cute little wombat. So now as we're approaching Wilson's promontory, the road's gotten a lot better, a lot twistier, a lot more interesting, bumpier. And while this isn't necessarily a performance car, the Model 3 is actually pretty entertaining to drive. It's about 1,850 kilos, give or take. By the time you put people in, it's a little bit more. So while it's pretty heavy for a hatchback, all the weight is down very low in the form of the batteries. So it actually handles really well. Welcome to Wilson's Promontory, pretty specky place. This marks the halfway point of our journey. The road in was pretty good fun, I must say, but we had to go back and forth for video and photos a few times, which didn't do the range many favors. Now, the drive back should be a bit easier, but we're currently sitting quite a way below 50%, even though it said it would be about 50% when we got here. So we'll have to see how far we get back towards Melbourne and the Tesla supercharger. So let's hit the road. So now we are getting a bit skinny on range, is there anything I can do to eke out a few extra kilometres? Well, I realised I was charging my phone most of the day when I don't really need to. So while that's only a small thing, I'm juicing my phone from the car when I don't need to. But the main thing is I can actually adjust the throttle response. So I can go into my car menu, go into driving, and instead of having a regular responsive throttle pedal, I can put it in chill mode, which dulls it, which means even if I want to, I'm not going to be using as much juice. So hopefully by adopting these measures, by being gentle on the throttle with my chill acceleration, by carrying more speed through the corners so I don't have to get up to speed again, we can eke out this range and have it looking a bit healthier than it currently does. One of the interesting things about planning this drive though is that even a few years ago, you'd be much, much more anxious about doing it range anxiety. We've got apps now that tell you where the charges are, how fast they are, the operational status, reviews from people, and the charges themselves are kind of everywhere really. Even on this journey, like we haven't used a couple, but we could have if we needed to. I remember the first time I drove a Tesla, which is like almost seven years ago now, Model S, and we could literally only take it on a loop because there was nowhere to charge it. Whereas now, we've got plenty of options. It's touch and go friends, it's touch and go. 
at the moment we're going to get to our destination which isn't back to Tesla sadly but we're going to be finishing in the eastern suburbs which is okay as I said at the start this wasn't a case about eking every last kilometer out instead it was a case of seeing how far we could drive basically on one charge in a realistic environment if I stray above 85 kilometers an hour a warning comes up and says if you want to make it to your destination stay under 85 k's an hour I don't really want to do that because I want to go home <laughs> it's late and it's dark but we'll see how we go at the moment yeah 2% back to 2% now I'm trying to slipstream this car in front to give us a bit of extra give us a bit of extra free miles get rid of that aerodynamic drag but I don't know if it's making that much of a difference Ah <laughs> oh dear, why do we do this to ourselves? So, we've currently got 5% battery left, but it's okay, because we have our final charge point, and we're going to have 3% battery, oh, now we're going to have 2% battery left. <laughs> it just ticked down, but that's okay, we're going to make it. We're only 13 k's away, so we're going to do this. We're not going to be left stranded by the side of the road. God, I hope there's a charge station here. <laughs> the app says that there's a guy that checked in today and said this was working and this was open. So that's as good as you're gonna get. So let's go. Pulling in. Here we go. EV. Hello. So apparently these charges opened today. This charge station. Which is kind of proof that it's a moving target, isn't it? It's always expanding, this charge network. Whew, I'm glad to see that. All right, time to put some juice in this thing. Well, we made it after a very, very long day. We are here in South East Melbourne at a brand new ultra rapid 350 kilowatt charging facility. Tesla's plugged in, we've been here what 15 minutes and it's already gone from 3% which we arrived at to 53% now 54%. So we didn't quite make it back to Tesla, we're probably about 40 k's, we might have even you know, just made it but obviously it wasn't worth taking their risk especially when you've got such fast charging available here. And that's kind of the point. So today we've got about 460 Ks, 465 Ks, real world range out of the Model 3 long range, which is a long way short obviously of its 657 K claimed range. But it must be said that last 50 or 60 Ks, we were pretty much matching the claimed consumption figure of 131 watt hours per kilometer. We were doing 133. So it shows that in the right, combination of circumstances, driving pretty slowly, right temperature, all that sort of stuff, we didn't have the aircon on, you can sort of match the claim figures, just like you can match the claim fuel consumption figures in a petrol car in really strange circumstances. What we've proved today is that without driving this thing really with a mind for economy, going lots of back and forths, 450, 460k is real world range, so the combination of that combined with the fact that charging stations like this are popping up everywhere means that, yeah, Go out, enjoy your electric vehicles. The barriers to that are becoming fewer and fewer. Mm -hmm. 